It's like a flower is put in your hand. And you can either crush it and own it, or you can whoosh, blow it away and just trust it'll come back right in your hand somehow. Just be in that open-handed state all the time. Seek it in yourself. Know that you have the ability to powerfully love and that there is no greater pleasure than to love another being from such a free space of not needing them to reciprocate anything at all. And when you do that, and when you find bliss in the feeling state, when you prioritize feeling good over the way it manifests, when you really gain that maturity, when you really bump your head into the wall of being attached to experiences more than enough, you'll learn that what is true bliss is the vibrational state itself not the ways in which it represents itself, but the state itself is what you're after. Simply start pressing a button if you want to change your feeling. Oh, I want to feel this. Okay, nice. Now I want to feel this way. Oh, oh yeah, now I want to feel that way. Ooh, now I want to create this. Whee! So it's very self-centered in that sense, but in a very beautiful way. You become a master of your state of being and of your reality, which you already are, but you regain it consciously, intentionally, and you clarify your vibrations. And then everyone will love you and you have more than enough to choose from. And if that's an actual vibrational match, it will show itself. And if it's not, it will show itself. But then at least you have found that what you're truly looking for is your own ability to activate bliss and union and unconditional love. And you will start to get this very subtle, distinctive sense that unconditional love feels amazing and conditional love, even slightly so, feels terrible. Right now, conditional love may still carry with it the hope, the promise of a better future. But you'll start to know through the maturity, through the wisdom, through bumping your toe into rocks of your own experience, of your own attachment, you will start to take that step back and know as soon, you start to sense as soon as the love becomes conditional, you know from past experience it's going to lead to this, it's going to lead to this, it's going to lead to this, and it's going to take me two weeks of listening to Bentinho videos to get me back to this state of being. And at some point, it's just no longer worth it. No matter how pretty she is, no matter her cup size, no matter how much love you guys share with each other, it just doesn't matter. If it's not relevant, if it's not true, if it's not free, if it's not radial and naturally reciprocated through the radial nature of love, then there is no need to go down that path. You don't want to sacrifice the feeling good and doing good and accelerating. You don't want to, to sacrifice the super accelerated way of living for any dude or any chick or any relationship or any promise of a better future. Because you know, as soon as you believe in the promise of a better future, you're actually lowering your frequency now, which will generate a worse future. If we want a better future, we need to feel good now and not feel good about the future. Yes, feel good about the future, but it makes you feel good now. But as soon as that becomes conditional on that particular image, what we've done, what we're doing literally is, okay, there is this seed planet, this new imagination, this new frequency. It excites us instantaneously what we do because we've become sort of lame and lacking the creativity to know that we have so many passions we don't even know about because we're not open to them. We're not looking for them. And so immediately after planting a new seed, we stay with that one seed and we monitor how it's growing. Hurry up. Hurry up. Hurry up. Oh, hurry. oh God, Christ. And then it's gone. It's not growing. So we want to always be keep planting new seeds. So yes, be in the future. But if you choose to be in the future, then be always in the future and never in the present. You're always in the love that is the presence itself, but you're always, you're always creating the future. You're never stuck on focusing on the now. You're never waiting for the seed that you've planted previously to germinate. You're moving on to the next thing. Great, so you had this awesome conversation over the phone with this woman and it's very promising and you spoke about like completely fully loving each other and like entering some kind of tantric sex discourse together or whatever. And like there's so much hope for pleasure and love and reciprocation. And then you hang up the phone and then instead of going like, oh my God, I can't wait for that time. Oh my God, I can't wait for that. Oh my God, I can't wait. Which like over the course of an hour, it can still feel good. But after two hours, it starts to feel really bad. Oh, wait, it's been two hours, but it feels like two days with this acceleration that's happening planetarily. Two hours feels like two days. We haven't talked in two days. Oh, but it was just two hours ago. Shall I call her again? No, that will look needy. Oh, well, maybe a little text. Oh, it was an awesome dialogue, but it already feels fake. Oh my God. <sighs> No, what you do instead is you hang up the phone and you go rock climb. And then after you're done rock climbing, you start visualizing this amazing car that you've been excited about. And then a, car, a call comes up that 
somehow attracts that to you, or you start visualizing whatever it is, or you start imagining whatever else it is, or you start expanding your horizon so much you gain perspective on who you are. And then at some point you never run out of things to be excited about anymore, so that you never have to wait for the past seeds. You're always so excited about the future presence that you never actually check in how your past planted seeds are doing, ever. You're planting a seed, then you go plant seeds. That's what you do. And then you go plant seeds, and then suddenly there's a flower, and you go, oh, yummy. And then the other plant, the seed that you planted, just shows up. Higher self is showing you exactly how and when it will manifest. You don't have to do that. All you need to do is vibrationally keep planting seeds. All you need to do. And then reap the benefits, but that will come your way. As soon as you start to wait for reaping the benefits, you're pro depriving yourself of more flowers in the future. So just know that the best way to secure your future is to plant as many seeds as you can at any given moment. And at some point, there's not a 15 minute stretch where you are bored. There is not a minute stretch where you can be bored. There's always something going on. This is what it requires, all in. Super accelerated living. It's not a joke. It's not for the faint of heart. It's constant. It's fucking constant. It drives you insane if you're not ready for it. But you'll only gain as much of this as you are ready for. You become completely different from what you used to be. You become, in a sense, very non-human, very accelerated, as humans are supposed to be. But in comparison to what we've defined humanity to be, you become completely different. So be prepared and start where you're at. Start exploring, start expressing that. Start living in an accelerated life until it becomes a super accelerated life. And always know that you contain all the love you need, my friend. You contain all the worthiness, all the infinite love and union and bliss is right here. And when you radiate it, I guarantee you, all these true relationships, the really true ones that really bring you joy and that really have the ability to reciprocate something and teach you something and show you something and receive what you have to offer in a very free way, not attached way, they will show up effortlessly one by one by one by one. I'm not just talking about partnerships or sexual relationships. I'm talking about any type of relationship, any type of opportunity that comes your way. It will come effortlessly. And before you know it, you realize that what creates reality is not reality, but you. So where you always want to be focused is you, not reality. You enjoy reality as if it's by the wayside, as if it's just a portion of you that comes into your being and you enjoy it while it's there, but you use it to increase your frequency even more. You use it to confirm to yourself that you are Lord, you are a creator. It's an inside joke.